Hi, everybody. Uh, welcome to our latest live video. We're on, uh, we're on Facebook, LinkedIn, and Twitter today. Um, I'm absolutely delighted to say, and I'll turn that off the screen so you can see it, I'm joined by Ali Benson from, from Limelight HR. And we, as you will have seen on the screen there, we're, we're going to talk about kind of planning to ensure that you get the best out of the people in your in your business and your team and whatever it might be. And it's something that I know Sally is very passionate about and has done various things around this. So um, kind of before we kind of go into the details, of that, Sally, I just want to quickly introduce yourself and we'll, and we'll go from there. Yeah, of course. So um, my name's Sally. And as you said, I run Limelight HR. Um, we work with small businesses, particularly those in the creative sector, um, basically to help them achieve all their business goals through putting their people first. So we like to do HR with a bit of fun and uh, encourage companies to really look after their people and get the best out of them that way. Perfect, thank you, Sally. And, and, and if anyone's got any questions as I kind of go through, you've got the, Q, the, the comments box on the various platforms that you can put something in and we should be able to see them. If you are happen to watch this and you're watching it kind of later than we've done it live, still please feel free to put the the questions in the comments and obviously i'll pass them on to sally as well um she's been more than happy to try and help with with all that um so today yeah we're going to be talking about kind of planning to get to make sure that you get the best out of your the people in team as i mentioned kind of i guess taking it back to basics how how important is it that you get the best out of your team and i know it sounds like a pretty obvious question but i'm sure from your experience you've seen times when it hasn't worked so yeah, how, how how much does it matter yeah, um, I I still feel amazed at the amount of times that the the emphasis on the people isn't really considered when it comes to businesses and achieving their goals. Um, I work with some really I'm lucky to work with some really good businesses that the reason they took me on board is because they focus on being people first. But I still I'm still hearing from so many businesses or people that work in businesses. Uh, or managers that work in businesses and frustrated by it, that um, that companies just aren't putting the time into the people. They're, fo they're focusing on numbers, they're focusing on goals, targets, KPIs, but not really the people that have to achieve those things for them. Um, and, and really the best way to do that is to focus on the people first and then the rest of the things follow. The money, the numbers, the sales, everything follows from that, but you've, you've got to put the people first. No, absolutely. And I guess one of the one of the things that's happened in the last couple of years is for a lot of businesses is maybe more remote teams as well. And so there's probably going to be a greater emphasis on how you, you know, how you get the best out of the people in your team. Is that fair to say? Yeah. And I think the struggle for a lot of people has been um, sometimes when they think in terms of planning, they think of the full year and planning it from the start. Um, and what COVID has taught us is you can't actually plan that far in advance at the moment. So I think some companies have kind of gone, oh, well, we can't plan because we don't know what's around the corner. So we're, we're just going to go with the flow and we're not we're not going to plan things. We're just going to see what happens. But the problem is that then all the staff are left there kind of going, oh, what? so what are we doing? And what's the aim? And what do you want us to achieve? And when are you expecting us back in the office? And are my targets still going to stay the same? So I completely appreciate you can't plan to the length that you used to. But you can find alternative plans, you can find short term plans, you can find the plans that work in the meantime, and you can communicate as often as you would, if not ideally more so than you normally would, just so that people feel a bit more relaxed and um, like things are less up in the air. Oh, absolutely. I think the communication is key, isn't that? Whatever mm -hmm. environment we're in. But do you think that one of maybe, again, one of the consequences of the last couple of years and remote working, I suppose, not just in a pandemic, but in no usual times, is is a bit more difficult to motivate people um, or to keep them motivated might be a better way of asking yeah. ask a question because um, that, you know, it's like we, we all have up and down days as just as people, like you, you feel better some days. And sometimes being around other people who essentially just cheer you up can help. And maybe when you miss that, that, that can be quite difficult. So we, we you know, as, as people who employ people, you need to work out how you can mitigate that. Yeah. And I suppose it's it's partly looking at what did you used to do in order to motivate people. And rather than just going, we can't do that anymore because we're not in the office, it's saying, well, how can we take the things that people loved about that and find an alternative way to do it? 
So if it's just being able to catch up with everybody on the team, it's about how you have those team catch ups now, whether that's through video or um, on calls if people are sick of videos or if it's doing something a bit more social and not work related. So instead of putting everything on hold, it's just finding an alternative. And when you make the plans, maybe you've got a mixture of people in the office and at home or they're doing a mixture across the week. So it's just looking at your plan and saying, who's that going to work for? Will that work for both the home-based people and the office-based people? Um, um, is anybody missing out because we're doing it this way? Um, it, it is. It's more difficult as a business owner because you're not just thinking of one plan. You're thinking of two, <laughs> probably three, four, five. Um, yeah. Well, that was absolutely enough. That was something I was going to mention kind of around that subject that, you know, from my experience, a lot of working within businesses is kind of one rule for everyone. And that's kind of what it has always been because probably for a number of reasons it's kind of seemed to be fairer and easier to administer but do you think again the kind of the circumstances have meant that businesses now have to consider the individual and whilst you know being fair to everyone is is, is obviously important but also considering personal and individual circumstances as well maybe is I mean this may be a good thing well it will be a good thing if that's the case that people will understand and, think and consider that more as we both now and as we move forward yeah i think it's it's always really important to in order to get people's buy into anything you want to do is really involving them in the decision process and uh, some com com companies in the past have done that better than others i think because of what's gone on m many more companies are now actually actively seeking people's opinions um in order to decide what the future looks like and to take into account people's individual circumstances, their individual fears and concerns and balancing that with the business needs and saying, okay, some people are desperate to get into the office and other people aren't um, and take into account, you know, the, the world around us and what's the safe and fair thing to do whilst taking into account all the individual circumstances. So I, ha I think that's happening much more, more uh, in a natural way now than it than it ever has before. It used to be maybe staff surveys once a year on a whole plethora of subjects. And now I think companies are more focusing on, okay, we need to understand what people feel about this. So we'll just ask them questions about this. And it's much more focused and you get much more practical feedback. But I think the thing to remember is as much feedback as you get, you ultimately need to make the decision for the business and for the team. And the team still want leadership. They, you know, they don't want too many people, you know, um, mixing up their ideas. They they want to hear in it what's the end point, the decision and why um, and have that shared. And once you've made that decision, get on and, and make it happen. Um, so it's finding the balance. No, absolutely. So kind of moving on to the, I guess, the main subject I want to touch about is about planning to do that, to, to get the best out of the people. Where would where would you start with that? Because I think for a lot of people, and I would include myself in this, is I wouldn't really know where to start in terms of doing that. It kind of it feels like a thing you do a bit more reactionary um, yeah. as a natural instinct. But obviously, I'm like anything in life. If you plan, you're probably more likely to succeed. So, yeah. kind of, if you could give us like an overview, of where to, where to start? I guess would be a good point. Yeah, yeah. I think it's really about starting with the basics and the building blocks and um, kind of assessing where you're at as a business and how you've got to where you're at at this point, what's happened over the last year, and then really what your focus is for the next year. As I said, and you've said as well, communication is the really important thing. Um, so I think planning is very much around clarity of what, what is it that you want to achieve and how and why and what does that look like? Um, communication so that you've made it very clear to everybody then uh, what your thoughts are and what it is that they're working towards so they fully understand what your um, requirements are from them. Um, and then it's consistency. And I think that's the bit that a lot of companies miss because then the proverbial hits the fan and you, you kind of all your nice plans and nice ideas go out the window and um, the consistency is the really important bit because you can you can do fun things and you know you can have some good catch-ups and then the business gets busy and it drops off but people are still craving those things and it still matters to them and if those meetings stop you know they go out of the diary or the things that you'd said you were going to do every month 
stop happening for a few months it has an impact on people so i think it's the clarity the communication and the and the consistency so starting off with like i said your building blocks be clear about um your, your mission your vision your values um is that still the same is it still important to you pulling everybody together this is our purpose this is what our goal is for the next year whether you call it mission and vision or you call it goals or you call it purpose it doesn't matter but what are people coming into work for every day so making sure they're clear on what that is even if it might change over the year that you're saying well at the start of the year this is this is what we're heading for and this is what we're aiming for and then talking about what they can expect from you in terms of communication catch-ups one-to-ones how often you're going to do things what they can expect from you in terms of support and leadership and then what you expect from them uh in return and having like you said rather than being reactive plan it in advance don't just wait till something happens and go oh god quickly we could throw something together on that just try and be a bit more organized and it, it comes down to just putting the time in to do it caring enough to do it putting the time in your diary to do it and making it happen Absolutely. Make, makes perfect sense, Sally. So I know, I know you've been doing quite a bit of work on this and kind of helping business owners and people with teams to to kind of do this. Do you, do you want to kind of tell us a bit about that? Because I think it's really interesting and really useful, actually, what, what you what you. Can doing. I show you my planager? <laughs> I, I love the, I love the, uh, I love the name, by the way, Planinger. Ah, uh, thank you. Actually, I have to be honest, it's your good wife that came up with it. Well, all I'll say, Sally, is that that doesn't surprise me. Um, <laughs> putting two words together. Um, yeah, she did say she liked that. Is, is her thing. Uh, <laughs> if, you, if you saw some of my other posts as well, it was potentially going to have a, a slightly more exotic name, which we realised wasn't going to be very good for general PR and uh, marketing. <laughs> um, so we, we did go with the planner in the end. And I suppose this was really my thoughts of, for small businesses that are overrun, I'm sure big businesses are as well, but for small businesses where there's maybe an owner who's the lead manager or for teams where um, they've got a manager who maybe there isn't an HR team to support them on the day-to-day -day basis and they've got good ideas and they've got good intentions, but they're a bit lost as to what does that look like on a daily basis? How do I put all of these things in place and what do I put in place? The aim was to really make a really straightforward um, kind of planner for them to follow throughout the year to spark ideas and then to give them an opportunity to, to write it down and plan it out in advance. So we've tried to take uh, some of the pressure off by providing the ideas and the spark behind it. So if I just, I'm, I'm okay to just to talk through kind of quickly what's in it. Um, I'm going to do it anyway. <laughs> no, 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 I'm only kidding. Um, so there's a there's a guide at the start for people that like to follow guides. I know some people just like to get on and do stuff, which is absolutely fine. But I'm somebody that likes to know exactly how to use something the best way. So um, I put in a guide for people to follow. And then um, we've got uh, uh, sections throughout the book, like ha having difficult conversations, reminders to do things like that. Um, and fun things. So we've got some uh, notes for people to follow as to how to have difficult conversations, what that looks like and how to maybe frame them. And also loads of fun suggestions. Um, I know loads of people can come up with ideas of what to do in the workplace, but sometimes you can get a bit stuck. So we've just thrown on a load of ideas there so that you can kind of highlight which ones you think might work in your workplace. And the starting point, like I said, covering off the building blocks, mission, vision and values and what HR things you want to focus on and then planning those out for the year. But when we really get into it, the, the kind of important stuff is the monthly guide um, where you can plan out what's happening for the month ahead. And within that, we've got all the awareness days that we think are really um, useful for people uh, related reasons. Um, so it's got things like National Cheese Lovers Day, and uh, Quitters Day and National Storytelling Week. So if you take ideas like that, it gives you a chance to do something fun. So if you've got something like National Cheese Lovers Day, then you get everybody to bring in a block of cheese and do a you know a cheese tasting session. Who doesn't love cheese? Um, 
National Storytelling Week is an opportunity for you to use that for an inclusion piece to get everybody to share like their own personal story of something that's important to them or had an impact on them. Um, and Quitters Day could be you could use that for a health and well-being purpose. So you can say, what's the one thing that you'd like to stop doing this month or this week that you think will make you healthier or happier? And so what we've tried to do then on the other page is help you break down what's going to be your focus for your strategy, uh, what's going to be your HR focus, what's your inclusion focus and your health and well-being focus. Um, and then also, what are you going to communicate to your team? Because like we've said, communication is really important. So just reminding people to bullet point what their communication points are. Um, so then that's then broken down into uh, weekly pages where those points can be broken down further. So you can really put plans into the diary. So as I said, the, the big thing is about having fun. Really important because you've got to have fun when you're at work. Um, the second point is around inclusion because you know tied into the whole diversity piece it's not just about recruiting diverse people it's about how do you make everybody in your business feel included how do you get to know what is um you know behind the scenes for people that you maybe didn't know and, and those things that makes us all different but has an impact on how we are at work um and also the health and well-being we all know because of covid how important health and well-being is so it's helping you use those awareness days to break that down into what that looks like as activities on a weekly basis. Um, and you don't have to do everything every week. There's an opportunity to do it if you if you want to. Um, but yeah, if not, you don't have to. Um, and also a reminder to who you're giving a shout out, because it's really important to obviously recognize people. And it's really easy to go through weeks and weeks of being busy and think, I haven't actually thanked anybody. Um, and like I said, having difficult conversations as well, because the point of being a leader is not just all the really fun, slightly easier stuff. It's it's doing the difficult conversations as well. And there's a little spot for you to mark how your week has gone. So we get you to add that up on a monthly basis so you can kind of see how are you going? How are you feeling? And is there something underlying that that you could improve or is everything going really well? And that's pretty much how it runs through the book then on a, on a monthly basis. And we pick out, um, you know, themes like in February, it's LGBT History Month. So again, there's another opportunity for inclusion there. Um, and then we've got also as a little extra, we've got a monthly um, kind of people or management theory where we give you a bite size introduction to what that looks like. And we give you a chance to fill something in yourself. So it just helps you if you're a, a manager who wants to look at how could I improve as a manager? How could I manage people differently? How could I look at situations differently? It gives you an opportunity to try that out for yourself. And if you like it, you can do a bit more of it or you can do some more reading on it. So we've got things like SWOT analysis. We've got nine box grids um we've got the douglas mcgregor's x and y theory we've got loads of different so there's 12 different ones so once a month you can have a little go of it and really see if your perception of your team or how you're managing them changes um so yeah and that's and that's how it goes throughout the throughout the planner and then there's some pages at the back for you to review how the year has gone and some and some notes pages um but yeah it's really focusing on i think what's the important stuff as a as a manager or a leader but in a fairly basic way and what we've also got is on the monthly um things you maybe see there we've got a qr code so that will take you through to a page on our website where we've got ideas for you for each of the awareness days that are in the book we've then um, got links to websites related to those awareness days and also bullet point ideas of what you could do as a team uh, like cheese lovers day might be quite easy to come up with something but some of them they sound like a great idea. It's not always easy to think of how you can incorporate it into work. So we're going to um, share all of those ideas with everybody that that gets the book so they can um, yeah, get some ideas from us rather than having to do it all themselves. I think it sounds fantastic. Sally, I think for you know, speaking from experience, someone who's, who's got a team and it's not a lot of difficulties and having something that kind of step by step can help you along um, is is fantastic. You've even very nice comment from from Mike there. Um, Sally's awesome. Oh, thanks, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> so um, 
yeah, no, I think that sounds great. I'm sure it'd be really useful for Sally. So when is when, when's it going to be available for people to be able to get? Um, so we've got it on a wait list at the moment because I'm I'm literally so this is the proof copy, um, and then we've got to go through the process of publishing it on Amazon. So it will be for sale on Amazon, and so we're signing people up to get alerted to the early bird release. We'll do it at a discounted um, right. Oh, you've got a handy link there. <laughs> So, the yeah. as well and obviously if anybody if they don't obviously if they can't find it for whatever reason just give me or sally a shout and i'm sure we're pointing in the right yeah way. yeah so we'll basically we'll probably have it for one or two days at the early bird release and then it'll go on general sale at the at the full price so um if people sign up for the alert we'll basically let them know as soon as it goes live on amazon because we don't know exactly when that will happen we're just sitting waiting excited <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, it sounds great, um, Sally, and obviously um, I'm sure there'll be lots of people who really benefit from it. Um, I mean, I'm going to sign myself up as soon as I finish this call as well. So. Well, I'm going to use it myself, to be honest. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's Great. So th thank you. And now, obviously, that really helpful with the stuff that we, that we talked about earlier. Um, so if anyone, like I said, is watching this afterwards and wants any questions for Sally or for us, just, just let us know. Um, but... You, obviously you can find out about sally and um, the best place to go to your website or, or to social media would that be uh, right website yes we've actually just redone the website so have a look at that um limelighthr.co.uk and yeah or linkedin um give me a shout on there happy to chat to anybody perfect sally well thank you very much for your time um I said, thank I, I think you. Really useful. um and yeah thank you thank you everyone for watching so thank you thanks mike